the signs and symptoms of schizophrenia. There are three types of symptoms related to schizophrenia, positive, negative, and cognitive positive symptoms. Note that in this context, the word positive is not the same as good. Rather, positive symptoms are psychotic and demonstrate how the individual has lost touch with reality. Positive symptoms include delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking, and behavior. Delusions fall into several categories. Individuals with a persecutory delusion may believe they are being tormented, followed, tricked, or spied on. Individuals with a grandiose delusion may believe they have special powers. Individuals with a reference delusion may believe that passages in books, newspapers, television shows, song lyrics, or other environmental cues are directed toward them. In delusions of thought withdrawal or thought insertion, individuals believe others are reading their mind, their thoughts are being transmitted to others, or outside forces are imposing their thoughts or impulses on them. Hallucinations may include hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, or feeling as if they have been touched by things that are not there. Negative symptoms. Negative symptoms are those characterized that should be there but are lacking. Negative symptoms include apathy, lack of motivation, blunted affect, poverty of speech, anhedonia, and avoidance of relationships. Keep in mind that the inability to show emotion associated with a blunted affect does not reflect an inability to feel emotion. Similarly, it is helpful to understand that withdrawing from others is a coping mechanism for an individual with schizophrenia and not a rejection of those who initiate contact. Cognitive. Cognitive symptoms are a change in thought pattern and include poor decision making, loss of memory, distracted, difficulty focusing. Treatment for patients diagnosed with schizophrenia may include medications to control positive and or negative signs and symptoms and non-pharmacological interventions such as limit setting, therapeutic communication, ECT, and psychotherapy. Key assessments for a patient with schizophrenia include examination for hallucination and delusions, use of additional substances such as alcohol or drugs, safety, their support system, and a medication review with a focus on compliance with their therapeutic regimen. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or ADHD, is characterized by hyperactivity, lack of impulse control, and or lack of attention that interferes with how a person functions. ADHD is often diagnosed during childhood, but signs and symptoms can last through adulthood. Signs and symptoms of ADHD include hyperactivity, inability to concentrate, difficulty with self-control, and a lack of emotional control. A child with ADHD may have difficulty sitting still and focusing at school or have emotional outbursts. These behaviors often impact their life. Medication, psychotherapy, behavior management, and family support all play a large part in helping an individual with ADHD. Seizures the official definition of a seizure is 
a transient occurrence of signs and or symptoms due to abnormal excessive or synchronous neuronal activity in the brain. This means that during a seizure, large number of brain cells are activated abnormally at the same time. It is like an electrical storm in the brain. They may alter consciousness and produce abnormal motor activity. There are different classifications of seizures based on the severity of symptoms. Signs and symptoms of seizures include motor symptoms, jerking, such as clonic, muscles becoming limp or weak, atonic, tense or rigid muscles, tonic, brief muscle twitching, myoclonus, and epileptic spasms. Non-motor sy symptoms, changes in sensation, emotions, thinking, or autonomic functions. Lack of movement. The classification of seizures. Seizures are classified in many different ways, beginning with whether they are partial or generalized seizures. Partial seizures. Partial seizures have focal onset on one side of the brain. They are further classified into simple, complex, or secondarily generalized. Simple partial seizures are most common. They may also affect sensory or autonomic systems. Complex partial seizures include impairment of consciousness with or without motor activity or other signs. Simple or complex partial seizures may become secondarily generalized, producing a tonic-clonic seizure. Generalized seizures. Generalized seizures have bilateral onset on both sides of the brain and are typified by petite mal seizures, which can be recognized by clinical characteristics as well as interictal EEG abnormalities. Status epileptics. Status epilepticus is a state of repeated or continuous seizures. It is often defined operationally as a single seizure lasting more than 20 minutes or repeated seizures without recovery of consciousness. Prolonged status epilepticus leads to irreversible brain injury and has a very high rate of mortality. The goal of therapy should be to achieve control of a seizure within 60 minutes or less. Pharmacological treatment of seizures is very successful in the majority of cases, but it requires accurate diagnosis and classification of seizures. Medication management of seizures may include CNS depressants, benzodiazepines or barbiturates or anticonvulsants such as phenytoin. Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disease of the nervous system that impairs one's ability to move. The typical onset for Parkinson's disease is middle to later stages of life. This disease worsens over time and has no cure. The cause of this disease is unknown, but it is known that it is characterized by a loss of dopaminergic neurons. The signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease include tremor at rest, bradykinesia, muscle rigidity, postural instability, gait disturbance, dystonia, ophthalmoplegia, and active mood disorders. 
Treatment for a patient with Parkinson's disease often includes medication to increase dopamine in the brain to slow the progression of the disease. Potential new treatment of proteins in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. The underlying cause of some neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, appears to be related to proteins, specifically pro to proteins behaving badly. One of the strongest theories of what causes Alzheimer's disease is based on the accumulation of beta amyloid plaques, dense conglomerations of a protein that is not functioning correctly. Parkinson's disease is linked to an increase in a protein known as alpha synuclein that is toxic to the cells of the substantia nigra nucleus in the midbrain. For proteins to function correctly, they are dependent on their three-dimensional shape. The linear sequence of amino acids folds into a three-dimensional shape that is based on the interactions between and among those amino acids. When the folding is disturbed and proteins take on a different shape, they stopped functioning correctly. But the but the disease is not necessarily the result of functional loss of these proteins. Rather, these altered proteins start to accumulate and may become toxic. For example, in Alzheimer's, the hallmark of the disease is the accumulation of these amyloid plaques in the cerebral cortex. The term coined to describe this sort of disease is proteopathy, and it includes other diseases. Crutchfield-Jacob disease, the human variant of the disease known as mad cow disease, also involves the accumulation of amyloid plaques, similar to Alzheimer's. Diseases of other organ systems can fall into this group as well such as cystic fibrosis or type 2 diabetes. Recognizing the relationship between these diseases has suggested new therapeutic possibilities. Interfering with the accumulation of the proteins and possibly as early as their original production within the cell may unlock new ways to alleviate these devastating diseases.